Champ Card is brought to you by Da Vinci Foods. Brought to you by the Briggs & Stratton 206 Kart Racing Engine. And by Drinkwater. Real athletes don't drink energy drinks, they drink water. Here we are at the Canadian Karting Championships at beautiful Mo Sport Kartways in beautiful Bowmanville, Ontario. A full grid today. Close to 40 competitors will competing in today's final. There's Kevin King. He'll be from P2 in the Burrell, uh, Burrell Art Kart, sponsored by PSL Karting. Kevin King decided to come back into karting. Couldn't resist this program of Briggs & Stratton. David Miller here in the Fernando Alonso Kart in P12. A lot of people have been preparing all year for this race, some people for many years. This is the one that everyone wants to win. A couple of the competitors giving themselves good luck wishes before the race, but once the visor comes down and the green goes, there are no more friends. Ron Fellows, who's been a big fan of kart racing, one of the best known stock car drivers in Canadian history is making his presence felt in the helicopter. Michael Glaze in P6, also in the Burrell Art chassis. Michael Glaze, another young man who decided to get back into kart racing after a break of a couple of years. This Briggs & Stratton program is just too exciting. David Klaus from Briggs & Stratton congratulating, welcoming all the drivers. I think the success he's had with this series has gone further than any of his most anticipated dreams this is just taken off completely and he's very enthusiastic about it wants to take this even further and is just very very excited and wants to wish the drivers personally for their their input and the desire which they show to come in race in this Briggs and Stratton project and of course who can resist Charlotte Lalone I believe she's going to be starting in P10 or P11. Very beautiful Charlotte, very popular with all the sponsors and the drivers too, except for when it comes to racing. And here they are, K and P racing. Kyle and Pierce Herter. Kyle will be starting in P5. They're not smiling now. Maybe they'll be smiling if they can get onto the podium. I, was, I think Kyle was kind of hoping to be starting on the front row, but never count out their herders when it comes to the Canadian Karting Finals. Simon Bélanger is a Coupe de Québec leader and has also done very well in the ECKC. Kyle Edgar is a man to look out for today. He'll be starting from P1. Kyle's been very competitive all season long. Will today be his day? We will know in about 20 laps time. Kevin King, as I said, who has in the past finished third in the Rotax Senior, got back into car, and you can see him smiling through the helmet as he'll be starting on the front row, right next to Kyle Edgar. Jonathan Treadwell, a name we've heard a lot this summer, will be starting from P3 right behind him. We can see the excitement and the smiles from the main men there at Briggs and Stratton. P4, former winner of this chase, Gerald Kaisley from Prince Edward Island could not resist coming down to Mosport for this race. And there he is with a very determined look. Kyle Herter will be in P5. Michael Glaze, another one coming back into Cardin, will be starting on the outside of row three, inside of row four. Sean McPhee, a new name that we're seeing here near the front of the grid. And Simon Belanger has several third and second place finishes this race. Simo, relative newcomer to karting, has done fabulous these last couple of years. Christopher Proyo, Proietto will be on outside of that row. Tom Kadzir, P1, P5, sorry, will be on the inside of the fifth row. And right next to him, oh, another herder with a very determined look. Pierce, the very good looking young man herder. He wants to go to the front. David Miller is also going to be in P12. This is going to round out the top six rows. Mike Smith. P13, ranked 21st in the ECKC carding on a Cosmic card. Mike Smith is in P14 on an Intrepid. It looks like the Intrepid or the Orange card. And right to next to him, P15, Michael Forget. And the Team Margay, so that would be a Margay card. 
Oh, a lot of nerves and tension right now. The driver is going through some final mental preparations. The excitement level has been building all summer and for some of these drivers pretty much many, many years. And it always comes down to the Canadian Karting Championship. Who will be on top? Start them up, boys and ladies as well as the mechanics get the engines fired up. Last minute of concentration from the drivers here as they're waiting for the official to just drop that green flag and let them wander onto the track as they get ready for their pace laps here. Here we go. Green flag is waving. Oh, I'm excited. I hope you fans are as excited as I am. I have a feeling this is going to be an exciting race. Beautiful kart racing facility here at Mosport Park. Variety of sponsors have jumped online. Once again, your top seven, Edgar King, Kaisley Treadwell, Michael Glaze, Kyle Herter, Simon Belanger. Any one of those seven can make it to the top. Your next 8 to 14, we have Christopher Proieto. I want to get that name right, in 10. And that's David Miller in 11. Daryl Timmers in position 13. Charlotte Lalonde, the first lady in today's race, will be starting in 15. I wish you best of luck to Charlotte Lalonde, known her since she was racing at 12 years old at a very young age. Beautiful kart racing facility here. This is the rest of our field here. Charles Roger Ball, one of the top drivers, will be in P28, not quite sure how he's starting so far back. A lot of crazy things can happen. Oh, lovely, lovely pace car we have today. Adds a little bit more of color and excitement, but that often happens when you have a kart racing track in the interior of a car racing track. So we get the different classes, uh, get to be mixed together. Some of the kart racers get to, to meet and talk to some of the car racing drivers. A very unique, uh, fascinating facility here. As we see, the drivers look so relaxed. You know, once you're on the pace lap, this is what you've been waiting for. Sitting there on the false grid. Oh, here we got our last crew. Richard Schumacher in 29. Dylan Brady, 32. Jacob Lowe in P35. That's a long ways back. Nothing short of a miracle will get you to the front. William Gusley, Mike Delaplante, Kyle Rennie and James Hines. 39 competitors here for the starting grid final of the Briggs and Stratton Senior Canadian Karting Championships. You know, sitting on the grid, the butterflies are going, you're concentrating, you're nervous, but once the carts are rolling and you're out there on the pace laps, all the nerves go away. It is time to focus and concentrate see some of the drivers wish, wishing each other look that's just a little bit of fair sportsmanship but once that green drops i think the sportsmanship will be out the window look at that 39 carts lined up row by row this is a very exciting moment for the spectators we see the pace car now wandering into the pits as the drivers are in formation will we get a green on our first Green flag is given. Here we go. The start of the Briggs and Stratton Canadian. That's an incredible chicane followed by left-hander. Oh, a couple of competitors out. Ouch, that looked a little bit painful. We'll have to give you a report on that as soon as we get some info from the competitors, from, from the officials, I mean. Your leader currently right now is Kyle Edgar, followed very closely by Kevin King. Oh, red flag, red flag. Oh, we always hate to see a red flag incident. Just going to pray and hope that no one got hurt. Yeah, we could see way off there in the background. Right at, right there was, it was a left-hander after the chicane, right after the start. And we saw a few carts uh, getting some uh, a nasty tangling situation. Safety is always first in kart racing. Well, in all forms of motor racing. So not now we're going to have a red flag. We're going to have to restart the race from the start and just give the officials, uh, give the, the safety personnel a chance. We're gonna get the ambulance on the track just to make sure now that everyone is okay. Didn't see anything major happen, but you just never know. Um, Richard Sumacher and Zach Bohm went out pretty harsh. It looked like the, the fellow in the, uh, that was the Tony card who seemed to, to take the, uh, the biggest brunt of it. Yeah, that was Schumacher, I believe, in the Tony card. And uh, 
He, he did not look uh, very comfortable as his cart was exiting the track. So uh, we've got the ambulance technicians, professional staff here at the race. We're going to be taking a, taking a look at Richard and make sure that everything's okay. Red flag this early in the race or, or on the first lap like that means that the race has never started and that we have to restart again from the front. We see one of the officials pulling the cart away. A little nerve-wracking for some of the drivers, especially when one of your, your friends or teammates or competitors involved. You're always kind of hoping, uh, well, not always, you're kind of, you're always hoping that everyone's okay. The officials, are the, uh, the ambulance technicians are there. I, I see Richard moving, so I don't think it's anything too serious. But uh, I know for some of the drivers now sitting there on the false grid, they're always a little bit concerned about their competitors. Everybody wants to do well. Everybody wants to win. But uh, it is kart racing after all, and that's one of the great things about it. It's a, it's a relative injury-free sport. But it is motor racing nonetheless, so injuries do happen from time to time and unfortunately are part of the game. Some of the drivers have removed their helmet. Well, we're going to take go for a break as the ambulance technicians and officials sort this all out. Welcome back to the Canadian Karting Championships, the Briggs and Stratton Senior Final. Good news to report, Richard Schumacher, Zach Baum are okay. I, they will not be competing in the final, but they are okay, which is very good news to everyone. Here we go, we're about to start the race over again, which means we'll be doing two full pace laps, as if the first race never happened. Some of the drivers have got to start their own engines. Mechanics are not allowed to work on the cards or to touch the cards on a red flag situation. You saw Pierce giving his older brother Kyle a hand. I'm sure they'll be joking about that afterwards as everyone seems to have their engines running and ready to go. This is a fabulous project. This is a fabulous engine by Briggs and Stratton. Very affordable. You want to get into car racing. This is a great entry level program. Very affordable and reliable engine. There we have that crazy right-hander, and that leads into the left-hander that goes up the hill. This is where he had an incident at, at the first start. Hopefully everyone will get through nice and safe this time around. Speaking to some of the drivers, they tell me this is one of their favorite tracks in all of Canada. The people at Most Sport have done a fabulous job bring, keeping this facility up and alive. And when you see the change in elevation like that, let me tell you, very exciting as a driver. You'll get to see, you, you feel the full force of the Gs as you're going through the corners. And there are times when you're going up and down some of those ch elevation changes or you're, you gotta swallow twice because it's a, very, uh, it's a very hairy, exciting time to be a kart racer. So nothing has changed, of course, since we're restarting. At, from the start, well, that would only make sense. Kyle Edgar, Kevin King, Gerald Casey, Jonathan Treadwell, your top four, Michael Glaze and Kyle Herter. We are now entering the second pace lap. That's just one to do. A lot of times during the face, first pace lap, the drivers go a little bit faster, clean out the engines, and the second pace lap, they all bunch out. Here we go, we got a green flag for a second time. Let's go, let's keep it all clean and safe. Looks like Kevin King had a good start. No, Kyle Edgar manages to hold on to the lead. Kevin King manages to stay in second place. This is the top two guys we're focused on right now. Yeah, I believe that's it. Kyle Edgar, Kevin King. Oh, we see some uh, three wide there, right? Uh, that was seven, eight, and ninth position. Just gonna let them sort themselves out a bit here. That's Simon Belanger in the Alonso cart on the outside. He looks like he may have uh, had a, a bit of an awful start. Can Tom Cadieu is now off the track. That is never go. That is never good. Here we go, your top three competitors, Edgar, King, and Kaisley. Kaisley from Prince Edward Island has won this race in the past in 2012. In the Burrell cart, Burrell Art cart, got to get used to that new pronunciation. 
Kaisley looks very aggressive, thinking about diving into second place, but says, nah, maybe I'll wait and hang on a bit, as we got Jonathan Treadwell in P4. Kyle Edgar looks nice and calm, just leaning over the steering wheel ever so slightly, take a little bit of weight off the, the rear axle, and it also helps a little bit with the drafting. He knows he can count on Kevin King to push him. The top four drivers are going to try and push away from the field and sort it out between themselves. In P5, that is Sean McPhee, and right behind Sean McPhee, that would be Kyle Herter. So there's your top six. Very important. A lot of times the drivers early on in the race, especially oh, Simon Belanger down at P11, and unfortunately is going backwards right now. Looks like Simon Belanger has now lost another position. Saw him with a, a wheel on the outside. That's Daryl Timmers, who have gotten into P11. I think Simon Belanger is now in P13. I don't know if he has a problem with his car. Very fast competitor. Don't expect to see that so early in the race. Here we go, our top three drivers. Oh, Kyle Herner has now gotten by. He's up into P5, getting by Sean McPhee. One, two, three, four, five, six. The, you'll, you'll notice at the start of the race, the veteran drivers, the guys who want to give themselves a chance to win, are going to draft and draft to try and pull away from the rest of the field. Once they can pull away from the rest of the field, that's when they'll be battling it out, usually in the second half of the race. So not, right now we have our top six competitors, which really hasn't changed. Michael Glaze is in P7. You see him there all kind of by himself. He's tucking down behind the steering wheel. He really needs to catch on to this lead group if he has any chance of drafting with them and getting into the game right at the end of the race. Kaisley is still in P3. Nothing has changed so far at the front. We have Edgar, Kevin King, Gerald Kaisley. Our top three maybe have about three cart length lead over four, five, and six. I believe that's Herder and in five, and Jonathan Tread, that's Jonathan Treadwell, yes, in, in, in four, Herder five. Christopher Proietto is now into P11 as he gets by. Is that Simon Belanger or David Miller? That would be David Miller. Michael Glaze is in P7. As you see, hey, being left out on his own, he lost the draft to the top six. So now he's with the... He's with the, the, the group battling for seven, eight, and nine. Will they be able to draft amongst themselves and get back to the lead? Some very long straights here at Mosport. So the drafting is critical down that long straightaway. There's a beautiful corner when they come out of the hairpin and then they come back downhill. <clears throat> One of the more exciting moments for the drivers, I've been told. Never had the pleasure of driving this track. Jonathan Treadwell and Kyle Edgar in four and five inching ever so close to our top three competitors. Kyle had, Kyle Herter in fifth, I may have got that wrong. Too many things happening, this announcer sometimes gets a little excited and carried away. So for the time being, Edgar King and Kaisley, oh yes, and we can see now that Jonathan Treadwell and Kyle Herter have now caught the top three. It was this, this battle that's been going on between 10, 11, and 12 as they keep exchanging positions there's Michael Glaze we still see him hung out to dry there in seven Jonathan Treadwell and Kyle Herter have joined this lead group so our top five drivers are ever so slowly inching away from the rest of the field that looks like now it's Sean McPhee who's caught out by himself Michael Glaze Charlotte Lalone in P15 is battling with Simon Belanger for P16 Simon Belanger is now up into P15 as he's trying to make a comeback, but this is, he's got so far to go at this point in time. Kyle Herter is now up into P4 as he got our, we miss it here on camera. It looks like Kyle Herter is now gotten by Jonathan Treadwell. The Herters only know one direction, and that is to go forward. Doesn't look like Kyle Edgar can pull away from anyone. He's just gonna have to uh, bide his time and be very strategic as the race. It looks like Sean Mc McPhee may, may actually have a chance to catch up a little bit. Gerald Kaisley in P3 is, I don't know if he's sticking too much or if his cart is starting to slide a bit, but he's losing a little bit, a little bit of the uh, lead group. 
And it looks like, oh, I can just, the body language tells me that Kyle Herter is setting up for a pass. Kedzio, who has now made it up into P7 as he got by Michael Glaze. Oh, there's Herter. He got by Kaysley. Kyle Herter is now into P3 as he got by Kaysley. We're missing all the passing. These guys are doing it in a section where I'm not getting a chance through these monitors to see what's going on. Kyle Herter is definitely on a mission. And you could see for a couple of laps, there was something off with Casey. I don't know if he was, it looked like he was starting to slip too much. Charlotte Lalone in P14, battling it out with Simon Belanger in P15. Tom Cadieux has now gotten by Michael Glaze. Tom Cadieux is working his way back into this race. Yeah, we don't see Kaisley anymore in the top four, so I don't know if he had an issue or a problem, because that's Jonathan. Yeah, there's Kaisley now in five. That's Jonathan Treadwell in P4, trying to catch up to Herter. Who's trying to catch up to your top two in this race? And that would be Tom McPhee, Sean McPhee, I mean, who has now caught up to Gerald Kaisley. I'm not quite sure what happened to Kaisley, but he seems to have lost just a little bit of speed which is an, c c causing him a little bit of problems. And now we have that is P7, as I mentioned earlier, Tom Kedju has now gotten by Michael Clays. Our in-card footage shows you how close Kevin King is to Kyle Edgar. And now we can see also that Kyle Herter is right on the bumper of these two. This is gonna be a battle to the finish, I'm sure. King and Edgar were kind of hoping to pull away from Herter because with all of his experience, you can never count him out. But Kyle says, sorry guys, wait for me. Here I come. I'm not letting you run array, one array with this race at this point in time. Our top three hasn't changed. That's Edgar, Kevin King, and Kyle Herter, and Jonathan Treadwell is just trying so hard. If he can catch up to these top four, Oh, here comes Herter making a move on the inside. Yes, he makes it through. Kyle Herter gets by Kevin King. He really seemed to have a lot of speed in that section of the track. A little bump by Kevin King, just to remind them that he's still there. And I don't think Kevin King has said his last word either. This might give Jonathan, oh, Herter's going for the lead. He goes, oh, nice move on the inside as he dove right on the left-hand side. Your new leader, Kyle Edgar. And yes, this has given Jonathan Treadwell a chance to catch up. Your new leader, Kyle Edgar. Kyle Herter, Kyle Herter, sorry about that, as he gets by, Kyle Edgar. Kevin King right behind and Jonathan Treadwell in the K and cart. This has given him a chance to catch up. Our top four competitors, nose to tail, nose to tail. It's like driving on the Metropolitan during rush hour. Herter trying to protect on the inside. This is a little bit early to be doing that. Kyle Edgar, I don't know what he's pointing at. They're talking to each other. Oh, Kyle Herter lets Kyle Edgar go by. I'm not sure what that's all about. Now Kevin King is on the inside. I see a little bit of contact. Just let them sort this all out. P4 is Gerald Kaisley. Oh, Kaisley is now coming back on a charge. He seemed to have an issue earlier in the race where his car was sliding around. That would be Kyle Edgar back in first place. Kyle, Kyle Herter is in third, so that's Jonathan Treadwell who was able to keep up to this game. It's now in second place. That's Edgar, Kyle Edgar, Jonathan Treadwell, Kyle Herter, followed by is that Kevin King or Gerald Case? That's Kevin King in P4. We have a battle here between Simon Belanger as he tries to get back into the game here in P13, and that's P11. That would be Charlotte Lalonde right behind him. Back to our leaders again. Kyle Edgar, Jonathan Treadwell, Kyle Herter. I saw a lot of pointing going on behind the, between the drivers. Not quite sure what that was all about. Sean McPhee still keeps moving forward. He is now into P5 as he got by, I believe that was Gerald Kaisley. Now our top three competitors have been able to pull away. So that's Edgar, Jonathan Treadwell dives on the inside. 
Oh, very nice move as Edgar got right back into P2 to per close the door on Kyle Herter. Jonathan Treadwell is your new leader. Jonathan Treadwell ahead of Kyle Edgar and Kyle Herter. Four is Kevin King, five McPhee, and six is Kaisley. Well, it looks like King and McPhee Fee have not given up and they have decided to rejoin the party here in first place. Oh, Herder making uh, attempts of a pass as Jonathan Treadwell protects, Kyle Hedker protects, Kyle Herder right behind is trying to figure out how am I going to get back in the front. Oh, that was some nasty contact. Kevin King says here, Kyle Herder, I'm not putting up with any of this nonsense. We saw that was some uh, very aggressive driving by Kevin King. A little bit aggressive. Is that Kyle Herter shaking his head? I think it is. I think Kevin King did not like when Kyle Herter hit him earlier and decided, well, I'm gonna take this into my own hands. Herter saying, listen man, draft me, let's go get the leaders. Meanwhile, up at front, Jonathan Treadwell, who was struggling in fourth place and caught the group, is now in the lead. Oh, Herder got pushed to the side by Kevin King. Whoa, now Herder drops all the way back to, that looks like sixth position. We got the three Burrell art cards here. Kevin King, McPhee, and Kaisley. Three, four, and five. They're drafting together. They're gonna try and go and get our two front runners, which is Jonathan Treadwell and Kyle Edgar. I believe that would be Kaisley in P P5 at this point. But will they have enough to catch our top two competitors or keeping it very clean? Jonathan Treadwell, Kyle Edgar so far have done a brilliant race. They passed when it was time to pass, but they drafted when it was time to draft. Pierce Herner and Charlotte Lalone are having a little bit of a get together right now. Our top two drivers are just being so smart as they pull away from everyone. King, McPhee, and Kaisley are third, fourth, and fifth. They should be working together if they hope to catch our leaders. They're switching positions on me here, these drivers in the Burrell art carts. I believe that's Kaisley now. Oh, Kaisley is moving to third place, Gerald Casey, as he gets by Kevin King. But with all this passing, I don't know if they're gonna give them chance, give themselves a chance to catch up to Jonathan Treadwell and Kyle Edgar. Look at that, very smart driving by Tread Treadwell and Edgar. Very smart driving indeed. They, they made their passes when they had a chance, and now they're just pulling away from the rest of the field. Coming down to the final instant of the race here. Treadwell and Edgar have pulled away from the rest of the field. They can just throw the dice on the table and settle this between them. Oh, beautiful move by Kyle Herter as he gets on the inside of Sean McPhee. And is that uh, Michael Glaze right behind them? And Tom Kadzir as well. P3 is Gerald Kaisley just managed to get in front of Kevin King. Here are our top two drivers, Jonathan Treadwell, Kyle Edgar are gonna battle it out to the finish, and Gerald Kaisley seems to have staked his claim on third position. Oh, way on the outside goes Kyle Edgar. Oh, a little nudge of Treadwell. That may cost him as they go back up the field. Gerald Kaisley tried, got on the inside, is now into third position. Battles for first and second. Oh, massive collision there. Kyle Herter. I'm not sure who you rammed into, whether it was Kaisley or Kevin King, but Kaisley looks unscathed. Meanwhile, back at the front, is Jonathan Treadwell gonna win this year's Canadian Karting Championship? Beautiful drive by Tom Kadzir as he made it all the way up to P5 as he gets by Michael Glaze. Yeah, there he is, there's Jonathan. Oh, and a spin by Michael Glaze right at the end of the race. Jonathan Treadwell is gonna hold on to this lead as they approach the start finish line. Yes, your new Canadian Karting Championship. Jonathan Treadwell, Kyle Edgar. P3 goes to Kaisley. P5 was Tom Kadzir and Pierce Herder in P8. That was a very nice drive. P13 goes to Chad Campbell. Very nice drive from Tom Kadzir who came from near the middle of the field to finish in P5. You don't see that too often. 
but fabulous drive. Congratulations. I tip my hat to Jonathan Treadwell. Jonathan Treadwell, Kyle Edgar were so smart. Pulled away from the field. Look at that. Sean Miffy didn't manage to get into P4 as Kevin King drawback. I think it may have been Kevin King that had that coming together with Kyle Herter. We don't see Kyle in the top 15, so that damage may have taken him out of the race. But I tip my hat to our top two competitors. Very smart. They made their passes when they had to. They pulled away from the rest of the field. And in the last lap, lap and a half, they settled it cleanly between themselves. Congratulations, your winner, Jonathan Treadwell. Kyle Edgar also did a brilliant, brilliant drive. In third place, Gerald Kaisley, who was not far from your leaders at the start-finish line, but by Treadwell and Edgar pulling away from the field, it gave them the time they needed to battle on that last lap to see who would come out on top and be the Canadian karting champion. The drivers are slowing down, no shortage of drama and excitement. As always, in every Canadian karting championship, there he is once again. Great round of applause. Jonathan Treadwell, who at one point was in fourth place by himself, and pulled out a beautiful victory. We'll be going to break and our podium celebrations. Here we go, podium finish, Gerald Kaisley. Haven't seen him racing with us this year. Made the trip from PEI. Such a classy guy, always nice to see nice drivers finish on the podium in third place with his uh, sunglasses. There he goes, that was the pass that may have granted him or given him the chance to make it onto the podium and he dives on the inside of Kevin King. And I'm not quite sure what happened later. Kyle Edgar might be a little disappointed starting from the pole, but drove so well. It, it really was a close battle. I had not, hope you're very proud of yourself, Kyle. Yeah, you could see a little disappointment. This was a move earlier on in the race where Jonathan Treadwell got by Kyle Edgar when Kyle Herter was still in, involved in this gang for third place. And that, may, that move was a little bit early when Jonathan Treadwell, your winner of today's Briggs and Stratton Senior Championship. That move enabled him to dictate the pace for the rest of the race. Your top three here at the Briggs and Stratton Senior Canadian Karting Championships. There he is, Mr. Klaus from Briggs and Stratton. I bet you he's as excited as I am and as the fans are. This really was a very exciting. Oh, look at that Reef National Championship. Beautiful trophies from ASN Canada. Fantastic, as he crosses the finish line. One more time, let's have a look at your Canadian Karting Championship. Our next show will be brought to you from Mont Tremblant for the Briggs and Stratton Senior Class, which will be battling out for the championship of the ECKC, Eastern Canadian Karting Champion, will be decided. Champagne time, boys, well deserved. They've been on the podium before. They know what they're doing. This really was a fabulous, exciting race. Hope everyone at home enjoyed it as well. Bye-bye from Norm Trottier. Champ Cart is brought to you by Briggs & Stratton, your main sponsor of today's race, and the 206 Cart Racing Engine. Also you brought to you by Da Vinci Foods. Real athletes don't drink energy drinks. They drink water.